Hey, what's going on guys? It's me, Train Man. We are back in orbit of Ike. If you recall, last time we were here, well, we slapped the other one of these down onto the face of Ike. But today, what we've got to do is bring this guy back. Which way is he orbiting? He's going that way. So the point of this exercise is, yeah, we got to bring this guy back here and get him to orbit in that direction. Now that's not going to be easy because he's in a polar orbit to begin with. Our best shot is probably doing something like this. Oh wait, that's going up. Oh. Then he'll be going that way. That's not what we want. That's not good. Hold on. Let me rethink this. Didn't realize which way I was going. Okay, so if we do this... That is quite elliptical. And I can't do anything about the dog, and I'm sorry. Didn't expect him to be here. Let's try this. I uh, well, that's a hundred and two meters per second of delta V. Didn't I say it'd be easier to bring the lander here? Pretty sure I was lying though, because I didn't realize that we were in a polar orbit. You know, if I do this though, we'll still be going this way, I think. And that's what we want, right? Yeah, alright, yeah. You know, I'm gonna just do this just to break Ike orbit, because if we don't, well, it's something that needs to be done anyways, frankly. And then I'm sure we can get ourselves lined up to dock with the fuel that we have. And 104 meters per second isn't all that much fuel. Hold on. Close the shield for now and control from here, just in case. 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1. Slow on down there. Doesn't matter too much if we do this burn a bit early. But I'm just going to make a guesstimate on how long this is going to be. Sorry, didn't mean that got distracted. Let's make this burn right now! We are firing away. Oh good, it's the smart cat at the door. I'm sure we did it. We did it. Alright. We don't need to be precise about this, let's just get a new orbit over here. I'm still... Ah, there we go. Oh, that's why it's... Okay, now I understand. Physics, I get it. Sometimes. Alright, so now we're out in orbit of... You know what I should do? I should try to bring this guy into a higher orbit, then. Should I? Could I? I'm not sure. This thing's in like a 75 by 75, it looks like. Or is this the awkward one that's like 75 by 130? 
I don't know. I don't remember. I'm gonna see if we can... Let's see... Let's set it as a target. Set as target. Descending node is here. And that's right near our periapsis too, so that's actually pretty helpful. Ah! Let's level that out. Come on, just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and descending node and descending node should do weird things, right? They already flop? No. Oh. Is that it? That's the match right there. Now we don't need to worry. Oh! What was that kind of maneuver? That Whoa! That's one heck of a maneuver right there. Hold on. What will that even do? Like, seriously. It, it's gonna do some weird things. <laughs> And I, whoa. And you know, if I could do that, it does not say there's a periapsis in there, so it's obviously a bit close. And it doesn't seem like there'd be a need for doing that anyways. Alright, let's just keep cutting this orbit down. Flip it this way. Oh. Flip it this way. Ah. How's that? Okay, and we don't have a periapsis, do we? <laughs> I managed to delete the periapsis. Oh, that's a good one. Alright, we're gonna do that burn. That's a 26 second burn, we can totally handle that. We have way more than enough fuel to do anything like that. In fact, the hope is we have enough to make it back to Kerbin. But, you know, you never know. Alright, let's bring us around... Four days. I'm, I'm thinking of using... I have a flash drive Kerbal Space Program, and whether you guys know that I do or not, I'm just telling you guys right now, and that looks really funny. That looks really funny, I have to say. I have a flash drive Kerbal Space Program, and I have been thinking about... Well, first of all, I'd have to clear some space on the flash drive, because it's taking up... It's not taking up the whole thing. I, I, I won't I won't say that because Kerbal Space Program isn't a big game. It's like a gigabyte and a half at most. Eight hours, seven hours. However, it's taking up the rest of it. I'll, I'll say that much. It, the flash drive has a lot of stuff on it. Not the least of which, actually, probably taking up the most space are games like Kerbal Space Program. There's locomotion on that flash drive. The sinking simulator on that flash drive, uh, also Steam, Terraria, I generally just set it up as my, it's my auxiliary drive for when I'm, when I don't need to do work. I have a flash drive that I use for school documents backup, and then I have this one that, that is for not school stuff. And we should be getting ready to burn pretty soon. Whoa, what? Why are we... What the... Alright, we're burning now. For a minute I was confused why the burn was there, and then, like, we'd already passed it. It was lying to us. Alright, let's see if we can bring this thing down far enough in order to get ourselves... Alright, 
an encounter. Uh, we're going to bring ourselves in towards planet. What's a parry half? 68. That's gives us plenty of room. And then at the periapsis, I'm going to try and make another maneuver in order to bring us in a little bit better. Oh! It's actually fairly close and fairly low. I don't think we can do better than that. No, we could not. Okay. So that 3.8 kilometer separation is going to be just fine. 3.6 now. Alright, so we gotta find our little node marker. Alright, so as I was saying with the flash drive Kerbal Space Program before I got set on a tangent about my flash drives. The flash drive Kerbal Space Program, after I clear out some stuff on the drive or even potentially look into getting a new one, that one's only 4 gigs, which is, in this modern world, relatively small. The Flash Drive Kerbal Space Program is the one I want to load up with mods. It's kind of my testing platform, or at least that's what I want it to be in my head. While I don't want to really jump the gun and make this a modded series right away, because there's certainly a lot more we have to do in career mode, just regular old straight up career mode, I will point out that mods make the game, or at least the ones I'm looking at, made the game a lot more entertaining, a lot more realistic, and a lot more difficult, and, um, how would you say with depth? It's a lot more something or other. There's, I know there's a word for it, I just can't think of it. With depth. It has depth. It's a mod that has depth. The, I mean, I, you could easily just say it makes the game deep, but it's kind of... I have 3.1 kilometers now. Alright, so you're still a target. We're going to come around, and then once we get to that, we're going to kill our velocity relative to the target and get on the same orbit as them. And then we're going to initiate standard docking procedure in order to bring us back to Kerbin eventually. Probably this episode, actually. That's where I want to go. Look at all these Look at that giant mess we left out there. We are terrible caretakers of this system. Third time's a charm, landing site. Now it's on the dark side of Duna. We're almost there, we're almost there. The retrograde... I, I can stop using the screen, as a matter of fact. Where is our lander? It's around here somewhere. Hold on, I, I gotta get into position, because as soon as I see it, I'm gonna start burning. I just need to know where it is. It's around here somewhere. Check towards the planet, check out from the planet. Ah, it's up there. What I meant when as soon as I see it, I'm going to start burning was as soon as I see it and, ver and if I verify that it is drifting away. Alright. Speaking of drifting away, that's close enough to being drifting away from me. Let's cut our speed down. Oh, that's the wrong way. Alright, so we're going to set get ourselves drifting towards the target. lazily at 10 minutes per second. And then we're going to get closer to said target. 6, 5, 4, 3... What does this thing predict? 1 kilometer, that's good enough. What is the maximum distance at which you can switch craft? I'm sure there's a way to look that up on the on the wiki or something, but I 
I'm not gonna stop the video to do that. It's just kind of something that popped into my head. I kind of want to know. I still have got fuel in this thing, right? Maybe not a lot, but I still have fuel in it. Alright, so let's cut our speed down here. Our relative target velocity. And we just auto-saved. I'm gonna switch to it now. Oh, I can! What the hell? Okay, I'm calling hacks on that one. What is wrong with my my lander? Because it did that to me with the um. Something's wrong with Bell. I'm gonna take come in here and take a look at Bell for a minute, and see if I notice anything that's very obviously wrong with it. No, that's not it. I mean, I don't see anything. Nothing's, like, clipping together. Hush. Yeah, I don't see anything clipping together on this. I mean, I'm sure if I switch back... The other one's stable. The other one is stable. Hold on, let me just... Let me just back out of here. And I'll go back to... I'll go back to the bundler, and I'll just fly towards Bell. And I won't switch to it until I'm right there. I just don't understand what's causing it to... To do this, basically. And I believe I found a bug, unless there's a self destruct module in my spaceship. Where's that? There it is. Towards we go. Towards the ship we go. Eight, seven, six. I'm gonna have to open up that um, docking port again. I don't know why I shut it. I don't know the advantage to shutting them. The only reason I use the shielded ones on these is because I think they look better. All right, I need to slow us down. We're gonna go right by them. Gonna go right by them. Let's open this up. Open shield. Let's turn towards the target. Let's turn on RCS. Well, we don't need that yet, though. Turn towards the target. And don't do anything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Alright, time to use docking controls. Not really docking controls, I just mean RCS controls. I mean... I've never even really looked at the balcony controls, hold on. What does this screen do? You know, I'm not even gonna bother. I don't feel like learning a new set of controls. I believe I used them for one of my first dockings, but I haven't used them since. Because they don't let you do both at once. Actually, no, I use docking controls, actually, more when I'm... When I'm, uh... Can I safely switch to the other one now? Ah, oh, I can, okay. Well, 
let's control from here and set this as target. Alright, so let's turn towards it just to make it easier for me. And now... this... no, this way. Ah, it's actually lined up. Awesome! It's good. This way. I just like how the keys are lined up. Okay, get away, you stupid thing. In other gaming news, I know you will be hearing this a week after it's actually happened. But in other gaming news, I just bought and downloaded... Oh, what is it called? Race the Sun. Which is a really fun little indie game on Steam. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with the music right now. We are inching ever closer. And I think we just bumped off of it. I felt a jolt. Slow down, slow down, slow down. I'm not sure I'm ready to do this. No, the dog is right, I am ready to do this. Although I think I'm just not doing it right. Alright, so I, no, not I. See, now they aren't lined up. Whatever the opposite of I is. In, in. Oh, whoa, whoa, we bounced. Bouncy, 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 bouncy. You attached yet? Turn off SAS so that we attach better. Yeah, there we go. We are ready to return home. These ta oh, these tanks do have something in them. Do have stuff in them. Okay, well, I'm going to transfer all this fuel into here. At least it's not much. And of course, these metal tanks don't have anything because what? Are I. Was this the one where I remembered to turn off the crossfeed? Well, either way, I need to remember to do it again. Alright. Disable crossfeed. Oh! One of these engines still has fuel in it. Which one? Which one? This one on the bottom. Nope. This one on the side. Yeah. Alright. There are only so many engines on this thing, it has to be one of them. And I am contemplating... Ow. I'm contemplating turning the engines off. We, we honestly could just abstain from that. But I'm gonna do it for my own benefit. I should have put... I should have bound them to an action group or something. I need to get better with the action groups, because I feel like they'd make my life a lot easier in the long run. And we are going to keep these nacelles on here. Um, yeah, because I'd rather have them deposited in the ocean than become another piece of debris. So what we're probably going to do is we're... Also, they have all our RCS fuel, and I want to leave this thing in Earth orbit for now. Kerbin orbit. For now. Hold on, wash. Yeah, okay. The nav ball, again, screwing with me. All right, well, we need to get home. So we're going to be making some serious maneuvers for Kerbin, which is over there. If we go this way... Now, this is with Duna's orbit. We're going to go flying out into space. All right. Other way, other way. Turn this around. Hush, Marco. I don't know why he's being so pesty tonight. 
He's in the background of a lot of videos, and he's just really quiet. And you guys know how he's on the weekly timetable sometimes. He just sits there and sleeps. He's just not having a good night, I guess. Alright, well, we're going to do it this way in order to conserve... How is this not farther than the sun from Duna's orbit? Oh, whatever. Four hundred forty meters per second. We can handle that easy. All right, RCS is not on, and we've got to do this all in one go because if we don't and we come back to it, then we're going to screw everything up. Also, I'm going to want to redesign my lander. Because as much as I love this, it likes to self-destruct. Don't know why, but it does. And then the next mission is to send another one of these things out. But we are just going to need to figure out what we're going to do with the science we get back from this, and it's probably going to go towards, like, the mainsail engine, and maybe even looking into ion probes and things, because I've been screwing around with those on Sandbox Worlds, and they are alright. The burn times are a little bit ridiculous, but they're ion probes and they can burn forever. Um, the first mod I'd actually want, other than something... Like, oh, what was one of the simple ones? Oh, well, I have that, that one with the research notes. It changes the research notes into a wider variety of things. But, alright, I think we're good to start burning now. Burned a little late, actually. Changes the research notes into a wider variety of, of different sayings. But, one of the mods I would want is the... Kerbal alarm clock, just to remind myself, especially if I'm doing uh, those, you know, 30 minute burns on, on ion probes, that I can just put them on and put on time acceleration, it'll be like 10 minutes, and then go watch a video, and then it'll go bam, 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 when my burn's about to end, and since it's an ion probe, if you're, if you're, you know, 30 seconds over, it will matter too much. And you can always readjust it afterwards. But 30 seconds over is a lot better than walking away and coming back and remembering, oh wait, I left that probe burning, and now you're outside of, outside of a uh, Kerbal influence, which isn't possible in this game, but you get my point. You can't make a voyage or satellite. Speaking of Voyager satellites, just made me think of the high gain antennas. Another one of the mods I'd be looking for is Remote Tech. Or looking into. Remote Tech, the uh, life support, what is that, Thunder Aerospace Corporation? Probably the, um, whatever the mod is with the aerodynamics? I don't remember what it's called. It's. I'm, I'm looking at a lot of the mods Scott, Ma Scott Manley has because his mod pack is really well done. Uh, Keythane is one of them. F simply just to give me something else to do. I'm not a big proponent of Keythane. Mainly, be mainly, I'm going to say it's because I've just never played with it before. Because the, I feel like the web page doesn't do it justice. There is a wiki for it, and it didn't help me at all, and it didn't enthuse me whatsoever, so it was kind of unfortunate for me to have come across that when I was making the decision about using mods or not. I know, and Marco is weeping. I'm not doing it isn't what I want, man. I want to focus on Bell. Okay, that's not good. This guy.
Also, however he's figuring out the launch windows is ingenious. Flash Marco. Oh. I think there might be Kerbal Alarm Clock, though. That's telling him the launch windows. Or he's just figuring out because he's Scott Manley and he knows astrophysics and is just generally a genius. Ah! I'm gonna take that 51... Oh, 44 million meters, even better! Alright, but one of the things we couldn't do in the, uh, whatchamacallit, Thunder Aerospace Corporation, the life su I'm just gonna keep calling it the life support mod, is something like this, until, of course, we reach higher stages of development. One of the things he has is the B9 Aerospace Pack. I mean, I'm not a big... You know, here, here, here I go saying this saying again. I'm not a big proponent of space planes either, I'm just not good at them. But with B9, that's it's a lot more than just airplane parts, from what I've figured out. And a lot of the stuff is actually pretty cool. So, I'd look into getting that. I'd look into getting a couple of other things. Uh, the Remote Tech is one of the biggest ones. Remote Tech is kind of the one that I was really looking into, like, this is a cool mod, because I saw him having to put up all those satellite networks, and that's what I was thinking, that's what this game needs, you need, like, to put up infrastructure and stuff, and hey, look at all the satellites we put up here, by accidentally blowing up a ship. Um, there were a couple other little tweaky mods, one is the advanced nav ball, I don't know, I think it makes the nav ball messier. Frankly, I don't mind having to spin around looking for my navigation location as much. I mean, I'm sure you can enable, disable different features of it, this, that, and the other, but I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it makes it a little bit messier than what it needs to be. He's gonna be out there for years. But that's what I could do with Kerbal Alarm Clock. I could run multiple missions at once. Which is kind of an advantage. If I'm gonna get anyone on this series, it's probably gonna be that one. That one in an, like, advanced nav ball. But I don't care too much about that. If I'm gonna start one with... Keythane and B9 and... All those other... Parts packs and... Yeah, what was one of the other parts packs he had? I don't remember. I don't remember. But apparently there's a Reddit thread or something of the like with all of the mods he's currently using for a series 17, 16, 15, 14, 15, 12. So I'm going to scour that list and kind of pick out things I'd like and don't like. I probably won't be using all of them, but he's got his chemistry down with how he wants his mod packs to work. And I know there are ones that actually make changes to how the tech tree works just entirely, like a reconfiguring and stuff, don't want to look into those. Because I, I'm i completely fine with how Squad did the tech tree, doesn't matter if it doesn't make complete sense, it's supposed to be kind of linear progression, not, not choose your adventure. I mean, it, I mean, one of the ones I saw was like a very direct This direction is space plane parts. This direction is this part. Oh! Uh, KSP Interstellar. Uh, I think it was the mod. It has warp drive. It's more warp drive. I think it's that one. I want to say it's that one, KSP Interstellar. That has a lot of parts, including warp drive. And uh, the heat radiators. The thermal, the thermal radiators is a bit of realism that I want. The life support is a bit of realism that I want. Motec is a bit of realism that I want. But above all, a bit of realism that I want, and I think is really cool, and I've said a bit of realism a lot, but I'm doing it purposefully, is the Deadly Reentry mod. And when I saw him playing with that, I was like, wow. We're, at that moment, words could not describe how cool I thought that mod was. And it still is pretty cool. I mean, the hype train is kind of 
slowed down a bit. But I saw it, and I was blown away, frankly. It was just pretty entertaining. It was very cool, very... Like, it... It makes sense now. And I assume the same mechanics work on Eve and Lathe and... Uh, anything else with an atmosphere. What else has an atmosphere? Well, Jewel has an atmosphere, but that's... Because it's a gas chamber. I'm still kicking myself over that one piece of bell that shot off at ludicrous speed. Well, it didn't shoot off at ludicrous speed. It actually just slowed to exactly zero when the first bell exploded. Whoa. Oh! Okay, how was that? I think I nudged it a little bit. Alright, 50 million meters. We're going home, guys. We're going... Guys? Just guy. One dude in the cabin. After like a year, an Earth year, Kerbin year is actually much shorter. We burned up quite a bit of fuel, but we're still going to have plenty. We're slowing down. The 909s do like 50 kilonewtons or something like that. And these guys give 60, so it's not much of a difference which engines we use. And uh, don't quote me on that, because I'm not sure on my numbers there. But we're just going to go over into Kerbin orbit, and we're going to try and slow down, and we're going to aero break if necessary. Also, I think it's prudent that I make a maneuvering node somewhere. Okay, I can't now. Let me click the blue line. And maybe when I get closer in. No. No. Come on. Why would you ever want to put a maneuvering note on that on that orange? Colorblind now. Purple line. Everyone wants to put a maneuvering note on blue lines. Oh well, I guess I'm not gonna make a maneuver to uh alter my course to get a better periapsis. We're just gonna go in balls out like this. Nudging it up, nudging it down, nudging it up, nudging it down. Alright. We're just gonna go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, if it ever seems like my audio is coming out of sync with what I'm doing, don't automatically assume that. It's entirely possible. But there... I... Not, can, not to say I've, I am known for, but I have noticed myself actually speaking out of turn with what I'm doing. Strange, I know. We gotta figure out how long of a burn we'll need for this, and if I should just make a la last ditch effort and try and start burning now before I get flung off into space. Two minutes of burn. Okay, I don't want to do that. 87, that's a little high. Uh, so touchy. Okay, 2000 is a little low. 7000 is also a little low. 24000 is good. We're going to go for a two minute burn. pulling an arrow breaking trick. I, I didn't realize what I was doing until just now, but I think my entire plan is going to be derived from something I saw Scott Manley do in his interstellar quest, where he doesn't like to leave debris around, and he tries exceptionally hard to keep debris from existing. Now I am ahem, completely the opposite. 
But at this point in time, I don't think it matters so much. Also, this means I won't need to use any RCS to get away from this after if, if, here's the big if, my, my thinking here, I'm just going to start up a little early, we'll try and get the parry apps as low as we can, and then failing that, not failing that, We'll try and get it within the atmosphere. 24 is good, but I'd rather have 30 or so. And then we can just do a few loops and bring us down. But what I want to do on the first one, or whichever one I deem appropriate, and saying that, okay, this is a low enough orbit, I'm going to disconnect. Now we're not going to have that much fuel left. I don't think I need to do that, never mind. I was going to say I'll disconnect the buster and leave it up there so that we don't need to worry about it next time, but there's really no point in doing that right now when when there's not going to be that much fuel left in it after all. It'd honestly be easier just to launch another one, and it'll be in a polar orbit anyway, so it's not like anyone wants it. Just when we come through the at when we come through the atmosphere for the last time, I'm gonna undock the busser, and I'm going to drop the nacelles, which is something you would not be able to do if I had uh, the re-entry, which we call it, the deadly re-entry mod. But I'm taking advantage of this while I can. Also, I'd probably be doing things a lot differently if I had any of these mod packs. Deadly re deadly re-entry is not one I'd get on its own. There are quite a few that I would, but that's not one of them. Because I feel like that on its own just makes the game quite hard, and it doesn't give you too much of an incentive. But that's just my first impressions on it, don't credit me for anything. I don't need this. Not anymore, at least. 15, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Hey! 2. Just gonna prop the throttle back a little bit because I don't want to go flying past it. Because I don't want to make this mission end with a ship in the ground. Alright, 49, 20, that's a little close. I'm going to spin around and give us a little bit of a boost up. Because 20 is a little bit close for me. I'd rather have 30 or so. 30 or so. Okay, well, now that's a little far for me, but whatever, we're just gonna have to make a few orbits. The thing not to do, though, is time accelerate too much and then go flying through the planet. Think of time accelerating too much. Alright, come on, come on. We're gonna increase speed as we get closer anyway, so it's not like a slow time acceleration is gonna be slow all the way through. Alright, and around the North Pole. We will be getting quite low on this one. Better turn off the SIS. North Pole's up there. I'm gonna turn off the SIS for now and just let us go through I don't know at what level the... Oh, look at that go down. We're, go we're still speeding up, though. All right. 
right. Okay, so we're, or we're spinning around this way. And I just turn SIS on just to keep us pointing in one direction. Because I, I don't mind the getting a new position to land in, but I do mind tumbling end over end. It's not something I want to do today. Still decreasing quite rapidly. Did we go through all the fuel in here? No, not yet. Wow. Still kind of surprising. The fact that we didn't. Which one has parachutes? Are which four parachute? What are these four parachutes? Okay, those are those. These are oh, these are already used. Dummies. I think I'm just gonna make a stage here for these guys. And once we get low enough that it's not gonna make it back up, we're gonna come back and. Okay, we are increasing in height. I apologize for the lag, people. I don't know what's causing it. But we're almost out of the atmosphere. Hey, we're back in space. Thank you, abrupt music. And let's just make another orbit here. I'm more than content that this lander has enough fuel. Now it's wavering downwards. And I'll watch this more from the map view than anything. So I don't think anything's gonna happen to the ship while we're doing this. Maybe some cool re-entry effects? Forty nine, forty eight, forty seven, six. Periapsis is still 46. Still bringing this up, though. Or down. Up? Well, up in relation to the North Pole. So coming in, we came in from the bottom. We started from the bottom. No, here. There's a delicate balance between... Not enough air breaking and too much air breaking, and this was not enough air breaking. Maybe 20 kilometers would have worked, although I'm not willing to test that. Which reminds me, when's the last time I made a quick save? It's getting worse and worse, what the hell? The sun. Bob's chillin'. We've got all this stuff from Duna. Oh, we have two goo canisters we never opened. I was gonna do those in Duna orbit and I forgot. Oh well. Plenty of stuff to do. I 
I'm just waiting for point two three now. I'm probably gonna start this over again. Just because of the different stuff. It depends how much of a splash it makes. Just depends how much of a change there is. In fact, I'm not entirely sure what this update's going to entail. I've just heard snippets. I've heard of, like, a control lab kind of thing for when you can't bring the science home. I've heard of... That's actually about it. That's the big thing that's been floating around in my head. So these are, I need to check which ones these are. Those are the wrong ones, that's which ones those are. No. You down there. We're going back up yet? Yeah, we are. Right, so we're going to be going around again, it seems. And I only want to detach this thing once we've charted a course for the ground. Because if I don't, then if I don't pay attention to it, it'll stay in orbit. Imagine how agonizing this must be, like for, uh, Bob, Bob, yeah, for Bob. He's waited this long to come back from Duna, and he gets here and he just has to circle a planet for hours. Some break. Not yet. I think I'm gonna give this thing a helping hand. Alright, down time warp one. Plot a course for the ground. It's not plotting fast enough. I expected it to be like... Didn't work though. At least we're burning through this fuel. It's getting used. I haven't got that much left anyways. Bringing our periapsis down too, though. So at least it's working in both directions. It's just generally slowing us down in order to bring us in. You know, it does occur to me that it's not my computer lagging, it's the game. Like, because I can look over at my Audacity recording and it's still running just fine. It's not everything lagging out, it's this game going screwy on me. Oh, and there goes all our fuel. We're still in the atmosphere. Let's get out of the atmosphere, come on. So we can get back in it soon enough. It's these that are the most annoying parts. When you're actually just waiting to leave, 
the atmosphere so you can come back around for five seconds and then enter the atmosphere again. That's annoying. I mean, it was worse when I had that situation where friggin' Emilio pushed the stage button on me and I had to get out and push. You know, that... that... made me think of something. Where are the aerospike engines in the tech tree? I haven't seen anyone unlock them. I know I haven't. But to be completely fair, I haven't gotten much farther on my save files than I have on these. These being the two that I made for... Whatchamacallit? Well, actually no, that's not true. I made a little bit farther on my sandbox one. So we're still coming down. Half of this episode is going to be coming down. That's what it's going to be called. I did not expect it to take this long. When we finished our docking maneuver like 20 minutes in, I was like, yeah, short episode. And then I forgot how to arrow break. But I think we're coming down now. I'm coming down, so you better get this. No? Okay, I won't sing. Alright, a course is charted for the ground. We can disconnect everything. Whoa, stop spinning the camera for now. Bye-bye. Are there parachutes on that? No, we just had the two sets on this. Alright, so now we gotta uh, deploy these shoes. Drop that. Just let them kind of float lazily away. Because we have more drag than them, but it has more drag than us. Are we going towards the sunlight? Good, because I don't like landing in the dark. Ah, sunlight. We should do a barrel roll. Just for happiness about the sun. Wow, look at that awful screen tearing. We don't need to lower the landing legs just yet, but we're going to sometime soon. So our electric charge is full up. It's getting full up. Let me just turn a little more. So, oh, there's that. Are these guys burning up too? Gravity, anyone? Alright, but Bob is coming home. These parachutes are primed to go, so when they go, they go. At least we know that this thing is not top heavy or anything or else it'll be it'll be tumbling end over end already. Where's uh bundler? Oh, he's over there. You know, it could be the RCS ports or even like the ladder that's screwing with us. Just the way it's the way it's done. Either way, I think next time we go to land on something, the lander's going to get a redesign, so... And it's probably going to get an upgrade, too, from one person to maybe two people or three. At least the ship is going to have three. So we're probably going to want a new busser. Parachutes deploy, gear deploys. That's not good. Thing of top heavy, son of a gun. Well, 
Might have to use some lovely hardware breaking in order to get us to the ground safely now. Stand up. This is going to be a fight. Oh, well, something hit the ground. You know, actually, this isn't so bad. I said it was going to be a fight, but after that initial jolt, it kind of leveled out. Alright, alright, good. I don't know where the sound's gone, but whatever, I'm not too broken up about that. Are we landing? Oh, that's water. Oh, can't save while ship is in atmosphere. You actually saved. Like, I made a quick save, you actually saved while it was in the atmosphere. I looked up and I saw auto-saving, and I was like, wait, what? You can't do that. Apparently you can, according to this game. Even though, according to the game, you can't. Hypocrites. Normally, I'd be firing my engine in order to slow us down quicker, but our engine is kind of a docking port right now. So, not much to do on that front. I'm going to go look at the sun. Where's the sun? sun is... not above the horizon yet. Oh, there goes the parachutes. All right. I think we're going slow enough for a good water landing. Also, I learned yesterday that Kerbals could swim. I was worried about sending a Kerbal out of a pod while it was in water because I thought he would instantly drown like a Spartan does, but apparently Kerbals can swim. Good job, Kerbals. I mean, that suit is kind of full of air anyway, so I think they would float without much help. But whatever. But I feel like it's been so long since I've looked at this game. Sometimes when I record stuff, it feels like it's been goddamn ages since I've played it. I mean, that happens often if I haven't played it in the meantime. Like, sometimes some of these games I play on my own. KSP I'll come to occasionally. Shogun I'll binge on. Uh, TRS is kind of a part-time hobby. And Minecraft, of course. Locomotion, not so much. Only when I'm at school. But I don't know, I just haven't really played Kerbal all this week. I played a little bit. I got... I, and I browsed through the mod section of the forums as well. Which leads me up to this mods discussion again. Um, I was compiling a list, and then I ditched the list, and because I found out Scott Manley had a list. And then I was happy that Scott Manley had a list. Let us cover this before it decides to tip over and break. Alright, how much science do you guys think? I think a thousand. No, I don't think a thousand. Okay, thousand one hundred and ten. That's a lot of ones there. Done. What can we get with a thousand science? So we get these nuclear engines. This apparently leads to that. That's what I've learned recently. This new metallurgy is helpful. The little stuff is really helpful, this stuff is also helpful. Wheels, couldn't care less about. Rover wheels, kinda want though. So I think... Let's get this. What is that? Ooh, I could use those. Should I get this? Yeah, you know what? Google module, let's get it. Okay, that's cool. I'm gonna get these solar panels. Alright, so we get... Ooh, okay. I've heard the seismic accelerometer is really, really good. That's the Gigantor Solarize... Oh, there's the ion stuff. Alright, so we've got enough science to get... 
one of these. Oh, wait. No, just one more of these. Which one should we get, guys? Science experiments, rover wheels. Ion probes, unmanned. Oh, hold on, I didn't even... <laughs> Read these. I'm just reading these, because they're pretty funny. Okay, I've seen that one before. Megan Train Traces of Science. Turns out it's not science fiction. Okay, well, that's kind of self-explanatory. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Or as long as batteries last. Alright. So I'm not sure what to do. I'm kind of stuck here. Oh, well, we can't afford this one or this one, so... Oh, well. These guys could become helpful, but not immediately. No. Meh. Eh. I'm gonna get the, uh... I'm gonna get this. What is this? Oh, more science experiments. Alright, well, we don't have enough to get anything else. Aerodynamics. 90. As much as I care, I really don't. And the wheels are kind of a luxury, even though the micro landing strut is kind of helpful. I'll get those guys last. But I think we've done enough for today, and I'll see you guys next video. Train men out.